Dan Markell murder case, uh, my call today to the Florida Department of Children and Families, uh, expressing my concern and now uh, the new evidence um, that came out with law and crime, the, the jailhouse tapes, my concern that there could be a murder-suicide by Wendy and Harvey uh, of themselves and Dan Markell's children. And I've, I've covered this subject matter before. I, I, I'm gonna skip over the gory details, uh, but you, you probably may have heard now that in the jailhouse tape recordings um, on the Law and Crime Network, which I'll attach to this video uh, in the uh, description section of this YouTube, um, uh, it's shown that Donna Adelson uh, on tape recording uh, said that two things uh, almost in the same sentence. Um, number one, she was thinking about suicide, uh, maybe her and Harvey. See, so this is what I've been speculating all along. Uh, murder, suicide. Uh, and in the, uh, the same recording, which you, you, you'll see if you access it on, on this very YouTube, uh, it's an excerpt from the Law and Crime uh, coverage. Uh, she's saying to Charlie, sorry, to Harvey on the phone, Donna Adelson, that the, the kids are coming for dinner. Um, so like, and then they, they even say in there that it, the plan was to use um, sleeping pills. So they could have done it that very night, right? You, um, I mean, pretty gruesome, right? But sleeping pills, like, so you, you load it into the food the kids are eating and everyone uh, goes to meet uh, Reverend Jim Jones of Jamestown, um, you know, the famous... Uh, mass suicide. Um, uh, so I call uh, the Department of Children and Families, and I should probably disclose at this point, uh, I think I've been a little bit blacklisted by them. Um, uh, when when I last phoned them, uh, I, they started putting down the prosecutor uh, in the case. They said, even if the prosecutor were to call us we tell them to get in line and uh, maybe we'll help them or maybe we won't. Uh, but uh, we're indifferent to uh, this consideration. I mean, and so, you know, when they're putting down the state attorney's office, this to me uh, caused me to raise my voice. And then I think that got me blacklisted. What is a blacklist there? It's where they, they say that um, if they've considered opening a case and decided against it, that's a blacklist. And I didn't call for that. Well, who knows what, what I, I, no, I didn't call for that purpose. I got two lemons. Um, it, and um, it, uh, but, but anyway, so I called tonight and um, um, I mean, I, I've had so many conversations with the DCF. Let's say there have been seven in all. Uh, six went well. That one did not. Um, it, it wasn't my attitude. I mean, by this time, Charlie had just been uh, convicted. Uh, so it was my actual expectation that now they would open a case, and they didn't. So I was a little upset, but I, I didn't blow it. it I just got the bad luck of the draw. It's a Friday afternoon, uh, late in the day. By the time I was talking to them, it was 6 p.m. on a Friday. Uh, so anyways, uh, I called today but knowing that I had been uh, semi-blacklisted, and I said, well, I've got some evidence for you. Um, and uh, what, because I've, I've got this thing that's that's attached to this video, right? It's, it's on tape, right? So you, the, the, the rule is new evidence. If you have new evidence, then they'll take a look at it. So I said, let me give you the evidence. And so this girl, Katie, says, um, no, I'm not going to take your evidence. 
And I said, well, then I need to speak with a supervisor. She said, well, um, I've decided you don't deserve to speak with a supervisor. I mean, that's pretty incredible, right? They got a tape recording of this call. What if something happens? I mean, their own tapes would be used against them. Um, and uh, so it's it's hard for me to psychoanalyze or, you know, if you're dealing with a bureaucracy, I mean, there, there's, there's three or four different possibilities. Uh, one is with the one we all hope for, but I, I just don't see the evidence of it. The, the, the thing that we all hope for is that somehow or other they are covering this. But I don't see any evidence of that. Uh, in fact, I see the opposite, right? Um, but I mean, it's still possible, you know. But would you bet on it? Anyways, uh, I wouldn't bet on it. Um, then, and, and the reason I wouldn't bet on it is because the Adelsons, with all their lawyers, have made the uh, prosecutors paranoid. So they can't afford to do the right thing, right? Um, because they're, they're worried that this will be then used as an excuse to dismiss the entire case, prosecutorial misconduct. It's not misconduct, but it, you know, when you're dealing with these horrifying lawyers, you know, they'll, they'll stop at nothing. So, um, um, the, another possibility, to be honest with you, is I, um, I, I told you I'd once been threatened, uh, and uh, it wasn't by the good guys. <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't want to think about it, right? I've been threatened, right? And so that may be, there, there may have been a uh, jam up with um, DCF coming from that angle. I can't discount that. Um, whatever it is, I think I'm going to... Uh, call on Monday, uh, call higher up, because uh, I, I began to feel from this call a form of persecution, right? Like, hey, w why am I being uh, discriminated against myself, right? This is their job, right? So you, you, what do you do in a case like this? You, you go up the chain. Someone has uh, a heart up there.